Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome back to NSUSpartans.com. It's another weekly coaches show with the head coach of the Norfolk State University men's basketball team, Coach Anthony Evans. I'm Ross Gordon, joined by Assistant Sports Information Director here at Norfolk State, Mike Bello. And again, Mike, uh, the Spartans are victorious over the weekend. One game this weekend, just like uh, in the weekend coming up, the Spartans took care of business over at the HU Convocation Center on ESPNU on Monday night. What an atmosphere, what a game. The Spartans came off with a three-point victory, and it was a tooth-and-nail ball game down the stretch. The Spartans just made a couple of plays down the stretch to win that one. Yeah, it was one of those games where, you know, even when we were up by, I think, 11 or 12 there at some point, you kind of felt like, okay, it's not going to stay like this. Hampton's going to make a run. Um, I, didn't I didn't expect it to be that big of a run to get that close at the end. Um, but, you know, NSU held on, got a couple of key – played great defense there down at the stretch. You know, Hampton really couldn't get any great shots off there in that last minute, so – I mean, you got to pretty much credit credit them there, but you know it was a game that they easily could have given away there if the ball had bounced a different way. The best play of the ball game, probably the most important play of the ball game, is uh, Hampton at in the second half started to overplay everything, and the Spartans did a good job of getting the ball into their best ball handlers, and Rob Johnson made a very good pass backdoor to Malcolm Hawkins for the for the layup to put the Spartans up three, which was the difference in the ball game. And you look at that play. Without the, the 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 smarts there by Rob Johnson to make that play, you never know how that game was going to end because Hampton had to hit a three to tie the ball game. Uh, they were they were driving to the basket. They were getting some tough shots to go near the basket, but that play really sealed the ball game. Yeah, you know, the way Hampton was playing, you felt that if we didn't get anything out of that possession, you know, we're only up by one. You felt like Hampton was going to go down and, and get something, even if it was just free throws to tie it. You know, you felt like, okay, we needed to score in his possession. We've only hit one point in the last – six minutes from at that point so you felt like okay this is a key possession once you went up three i think they felt a little more confident that hey we're going to be able to pull this out a couple key performances by the spartans led by malcolm hawkins he had 18 points a huge 17 points for rasheed gaston off the bench as we welcome in now the head coach at norfolk state university first of all a uh, huge win for the team because this was a team win because uh, you had some uh, some perlatives the guys played well but the team really came together down the stretch in a very tough environment to win that ball game. I think they did. Uh, early on, I thought we played ugly basketball. You know, there, there was no flow to the game. We managed to get back into it and tie it up going into the half. And then in the second half, we were able to get into a little bit of a rhythm so we could take the lead. But again, in a rivalry game, no team is going to let down. No team is going to back down. They fought back. We made it interesting at the end. I thought we turned the ball over a little bit too much, and, you know, took some ill advised shots. But we were able to get some stops and, uh, and complete the game. Coach, being on uh, the second game on ESPNU this year, you think when you're on national TV, does that kind of affect guys a little bit? You know, they're trying to do a little bit too much, you think? Normally we don't, but I, I think it affected us a little bit, you know, the other night. Uh, again, taking some ill-advised shots, trying to do a little bit too much, get a little too fancy. And it's just something that we have to correct as a group, uh, you know, just stay fundamentally sound, do the little things, and uh, everything will take care of itself. This team has been in some big games on television. You're talking about the MEAC championship last year, the, the game against Missouri in the tournament. Uh, even though the Missouri game had the same kind of feel, this game is different because of the matchup. Talk a little bit about the matchup as it is, because Hampton's a team that struggles a little bit to finish out ball games like we have sometimes in the past, and they've struggled as the season has gone along to put away teams, but they've been playing a lot better going into that game. Well, much improved, uh, definitely from the first time they played us. I think the biggest thing is Powers. Powers is uh, he's playing a little bit more under control, and, and as the season goes along, he's no longer a freshman. He becomes a, you know, a, a second semester freshman, sophomore, um, going into the end of the season, so he has some experience. I think that's one of the biggest difference. The, uh, Maxwell, Maxwell is playing really well for him. You know, he hurt us on the offensive glass. So those two guys playing well, they, they create things for other people. Um, you know, so the rivalry, it's, it's always going to be a good game, and, and it played out just like that. Coach, early on in the game, they were just calling everything. I think we had maybe like eight total fouls before the first media time out there. And then you could tell after a while they were letting stuff go. I mean, there was a couple of plays where bodies were flying everywhere, and there was no call. When you have a game like that, I mean, how tough is it for players to play in a game like that where they're not sure, okay, are they going to start calling everything or all of a sudden they're going to let everything go, you know, when it's changes like that? Well, it's, it's tough in the beginning, especially a lot of things were called early. Uh, mm -hmm. I think Brandon Good played three minutes and he had two fouls. So you, you didn't know how long it was going to continue. I thought they did a good job, the team, of staying together, understanding that they're going to let things, you know, go after a while. It's just they had to get a, a, the game under control. They didn't want any fights or anything. Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, you just keep playing. You have to play through it. Just stay mentally tough, and, and we were able to do that. Not to diminish what uh, Malcolm Hawkins did. We've sort of come to expect that from him. But 
Uh, I think the player of the game and the optimal defensive play in the game was Rasheed Gaston, 17 points, nine rebounds against the Pirates. And in the second half, scored nine straight points in the first half, gave the Spartans a big spark uh, with a huge dunk. As the season goes along, you've seen his growing pains. He's had a couple of moments, as, as you know, from your perspective, he's had a couple of moments. But he's starting to grow up a little bit, and you can start to see that in his basketball game. That's what happens when you're 18, 19 years old. You know, you come into the season, you don't know what to expect. He starts playing a little bit, things change, and, uh, you know, growing pains, like you said. And he's done a good job of, you know, we, we went through a situation where he didn't play a couple games, and uh, he learned from that, and I think, we're all the better for it. He's played great for us, really helped us in that basketball game. You saw his true talents or his potential uh, in that game. And Coach, obviously looking on to this weekend, now you got Delaware State. You're at Delaware State. It's only one game this weekend on a Saturday. And this is pretty much, if you look at the, what you guys have done over the years, this is pretty much the last thing that you haven't done is beat Delaware State at Delaware State. You've beaten pretty much everyone else on the road in the past two years. So it's just like that one last hurdle to clear. I mean, what do you guys, how do you, Tell you guys, obviously they, they're going to know about it, but what do you tell them to make sure they're not thinking about it too much? Well, I don't talk about it. Oh, you I don't, don't talk about it at all. No, no. You know, uh, I, we, in the past, we haven't had success up there. I think they've played pretty well or, or very well when we've gone up there. So it's an opportunity, another opportunity for us to go in and, and to play another basketball game, to focus on the things that we've been doing, and to continue our success. You know, we, we've got to win a road game, and, and that's how we have to view it. Not so much that we haven't beaten them, because before they came here, uh, I don't know how many times they beat us. They five beat or six us five times. in a row, yeah. Right. So you know the past is the past, and all you can do is, is concentrate on what's next. Coach, uh, you talk a little about this game, and this is a good team in Delaware State. Even though they've lost some games, they won 52-50 of the last game against Morgan State. But Morgan State was up 26 to 10 on them, and they came back in and won that game. Taj Tate had 14 points. He hasn't put up the the volume numbers that people thought he might put up. But he's still a very talented player. Talk a little about this team because they're starting to pick up a little momentum as the season uh, winds down as well. well. Greg Jackson's one of the best coaches in the league. You know, he's going to have them prepare for the tournament, and this is the time to start playing well. Um, they have some veterans. Casey Walker's been there. Oliver's been there. Uh, Gray was there last year. And then Tate, Tate's very talented. So they're, they're a dangerous basketball team. Uh, you know, they're going to start playing better, especially going into the tournament. So we have to do the little things. We have to stick to our game plan so we can be successful in that game. And, you know, going up to Memorial Hall up there, it's a little different from other places. It's so, it's probably one of the smallest, if not the smallest, MEAC arena, and everyone's pretty much like right on top of you. I and mean, we saw it last year when you guys went up there. That it, the crowd can really, re, can really get into it, expect, and guarantee they're going to be doing it this weekend because we're coming to town. So what do you tell your guys, or what do you do to kind of neutralize when a team has that big of an advantage with a small court like that? Well, just stay focused. You know, I mean, there's nothing you can do about the size of the arena, mm -hmm. gym, court. Uh, we just have to go in and, and execute our game plan. They're going to go out uh, ready to play. Uh, they won their last basketball game at home, so we have to come and match their intensity. Uh, that's all we can do, control what we can. Coach, getting on the road, going to Delaware State game on Saturday. Hopefully we can uh, get that and get that win at Delaware State. And I know you're excited about the game, as is everyone else around here. Uh, as we end this uh, session, what is the feeling around the program right now? Because this is something of uncharted waters right now we're, we're winning we're winning and we're doing well but again this team has finding new ways to win every game it has to be encouraging as a coach to see that it's it's not the same script every day it's exciting you know, obviously winning 11 games in a row team however many we've won you know is exciting for for myself for the, for the team but you want to keep everything in perspective we got here there's a process of how we got here working hard playing together you know, team basketball. And as long as we stay on that path, I think that we'll be fine. And again, you know, uncharted waters, yes, but sometimes you have to do things like that to move forward in the program, to move forward, you know, in life, period. So. Congratulations, Coach, on Thank the you. winning streak. Hopefully we can keep it alive uh, as we travel up to Memorial Hall on this Saturday, off on uh, Monday, I believe, and then we hit the road. Actually, we hit this gym again on next Saturday as – uh, we, we end the season with FAMU, Bethune-Cookman, as well as North Carolina a &T. We thank you for your time, Coach Evans. For Mike Bello, I'm Ross Gordon. Uh, thank you for watching NSUSpartans.com.